premise. We already have a female version of Lord of the Flies. It's called Blubber. Welcome to Everything is Lit, where we treat anything and everything like literature and dissect it. Today we're talking about a classic literary text and its potential connection to a more modern novel. Back in 2017, there were talks of an all-female movie adaptation of the classic novel Lord of the Flies. Setting aside the fact that masculinity is integral to the core themes of the book, today I want to point out that there already is a female equivalent to Lord of the Flies, and it's called Blubber. For those of you who didn't have to read William Golding's novel in high school, it goes like this. A group of schoolboys aboard a plane crash land on an uninhabited island and have to figure out how to survive. With the oldest among them barely teenagers, a lot of their time is spent frolicking on the island, enjoying their break from school and adults. Eventually, they establish some group norms and governance with the main character Ralph, their leader, flanked by Jack and Simon. Through a series of mishaps, arguments, and deaths, both accidental and otherwise, the hastily constructed society breaks down, Ralph is ousted from his leadership role, and the boys nearly burn the island down. The book tackles issues of civility and the construction of society, and I highly recommend it if you haven't read it or just haven't touched it in a long time. Anyway, on to the next book. Judy Bloom's Blubber, published 20 years exactly after Lord of the Flies, follows Jill and her time in middle school. Early on, she and her classmates start to bully Linda for her weight, following the girl's oral presentation on whales, which inspires the derogatory nickname of Blubber. Jill helps propagate the torment, going so far as to dress up as a flenser, or someone responsible for stripping the Blubber from whales, for Halloween, much to the delight of class president and popular girl Wendy. Eventually, Jill begins to regret being a part of the bullying and confronts Wendy, leading her to be labeled an outcast, and Jill spends the rest of the novel figuring out her new social status, mending her relationship with her best friend Tracy, and surviving the school year. Again, I recommend picking up Blubber if you haven't read it already. It was one of my favorite books growing up because Bloom successfully captures what it's like navigating adolescence. All right, I can already hear you asking how these two books can be considered equivalent. Sure, they both have a main character who goes from being popular to being a social pariah, but that's where their similarities end, right? After all, Lord of the Flies takes place during World War II, while Blubber is more contemporary and certainly didn't throw its characters into live-or-die scenarios. But although the staging for the novels is different, they converge on themes that are integrally linked to the formation of groups, especially based on how young people perceive the functions of society. Let's go back to Lord of the Flies. Ralph becomes the leader of the boys thanks to a conch shell he finds and blows into to attract the others to him when he first wanders the island. Similarly, it's Jill's creativity of creating a flincer costume that endears her to Wendy and the rest of the class, so though she doesn't become the leader of her class, she becomes a crucial participant in Linda's torment. In fact, it's Jill's costume that incites the height of that torment. Wendy's posse, including Jill at the moment, corner Linda in the girls' bathroom and pretend to strip the blubber from her with the cardboard prop of a knife that Jill made. You think that's bad? Well, I've been keeping quiet about an important character in Lord of the Flies, Piggy. He is one of the older boys and the first person Ralph meets on the island. He seems to think of himself as a sort of second-in-command for Ralph, but he's often teased by the older boys, and consequently the younger ones, for his weight, which is why he's known as Piggy in the first place. Though Ralph is far nicer to Piggy than some of the other boys, particularly Jack, he's prone to ignoring or teasing Piggy too. Fast forward a bit, and the camp splits, with Jack and Ralph leading rival groups. Jack and his gang want to hunt, while Ralph and his group are focused on signaling for help. Ralph leads his group to where Jack and the others have set up shop to get Piggy's glasses back. Jack's people stole them, and they're vital for starting the signal fire. And in the chaos, another boy, Roger, pushes a boulder down the incline, knocking Piggy off the mountainside and killing him. So to recap, both novels feature a main character who, through some cleverness on their part, rises in social rank among their peers and participates in bullying one of their classmates specifically for their weight. Both main characters also fall from that heightened position, notably when they challenge another authority figure. Let's look at that more closely. In Lord of the Flies, although Ralph is designated the boys' leader, he invites the Council of Simon, Jack, and even Piggy. The group also decides that only whoever is holding the conch has permission to speak during meetings, thus democratizing Ralph's power even more since anyone can ask for the conch. Jack initially wanted to be the boys' leader and struggles to hold on to the power he did have among his fellow choir boys, of whom he is still their leader, but he eventually concedes power to Ralph 
and instead makes himself indispensable, specifically by leading the hunting party. Later, it's the promise of meat that tempts Ralph's followers to Jack's party when the camp divides, meaning that when Ralph challenges Jack's authority, he loses his own credibility. On the other hand, while Jill never led her classmates formally, she enjoys her popularity until she challenges Wendy, the class president and Linda's lead tormentor. As mentioned, Jill becomes an outcast herself, subject to being excluded and teased too. There are two things worth noting here. First, both Jack and Wendy are already popular or powerful as head choir boy and class president, respectively. Though they defer somewhat to the main characters because of their ingenuity, they both are able to fall back on that leadership role to direct how others perceive the main character, and thus how much power that main character is allowed to have. Interestingly enough, both of these characters are highly respected, but become cruel when given the chance, which speaks a lot about the duality of humanity. Second, even after the main characters lose their popularity or power, they don't befriend the bullied person or make amends for participating in it. Jill and Linda never become friends, and Ralph continues to only see Piggy as useful for his glasses until he dies. Speaking of the bullying victims, both novels force the audience to participate in their torment by denying us the opportunity to use their names. In Lord of the Flies, we never know Piggy's real name. Yes, Piggy is just a name the boy was called in school by bullies, and when he tells Ralph this, Ralph insists on calling him that as well, never giving him a chance to say what his actual name is. Ralph later introduces the boy as Piggy to the others, and it sticks as his name throughout the novel. On the other hand, although we know Linda's real name, the novel is called Blubber, reinforcing the nickname whenever we talk about the novel. By doing this, both characters are denied any identity outside of their own victimhood. Put another way, we only know who they are and can only refer to them in relation to all the other characters who regularly torment them. This point is crucial because that victimization helps define the social groups in both novels by determining who's in and, more importantly, who's out. We see this happen in other media and real life, too. Victims of bullying are often excluded from opportunities to engage with their peers in a healthy or fun way. Some psychologists and sociologists even believe that peer victimization amongst adolescents is a necessary ingredient or byproduct for group formations. This is because it immediately establishes a hierarchy amongst the people involved, with the victims at the bottom, the perpetrators at the top, and everyone else in the middle. Bullying also serves as a way of maintaining group order. Since no one wants to lose their privileges, they won't challenge the bullying, even if they disagree with it, and may even participate in it to curry favor with those at the top. This is exactly what we see in both Lord of the Flies and Blubber. In each novel, one character is made an example of, which establishes a hierarchical structure amongst peers, and challenging that structure leads both main characters to lose their privileges in it. So let's run through the list of similar themes. Main characters who wield some social status because of their cleverness, then lose that status by challenging another authority figure. The use of peer victimization to define who's in and who's out of the core group. Escalation of that victimization to violence. Rival leaders who represent both respectability and cruelty or savagery bullying victims' identities being confined to their victimhood. Heck, we could even throw in fat phobia and fat shaming as a basis for bullying. Based on these similarities, I make the case that Judy Bloom's Blubber serves as a great example of some of the same themes in Lord of the Flies applied to an all-girl cast of characters. At the very least, both books can serve as school texts that can help students learn to be critical about how groups and hierarchies form, whether it's teenage cliques or society at large. <laughs> Fun fact, I considered making the same comparison with Mean Girls instead of Blubber because the movie also shows how a main character taps into the powers of group dynamics to become popular, then falls from grace. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of the rivalry between savagery or might and civility or innovation, check out the anime Dr. Stone. A major plot arc involves this face-off between strength and science. In the meantime, stay lit. <laughs>